this will be the inaugural uh, episode of In That Case. I am sitting here. I have the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Virgo Husky, a good friend of mine, one of the people from my ranks. Uh, I won't. I won't call him by your government. <laughs> I have to keep myself from doing that. But tell me a bit about yourself. Uh, where did the name Burgo Husky come from? What what got you started on music? Let, let's let's get a little deep. Well, um, I've been a musician basically my whole life. I started writing when I was six years old, and um. I, you know, that's, that's when my mother passed away. Um, I started writing when I was six years old, and um, I just couldn't let it go. And then maybe, um, I believe it was in junior high when I first touched the instrument. So once I hit instrumental music, it was just like the, the I couldn't, you know, I can't, you know, you're a musician. You, you got that itch. Yeah, you cannot get rid of it. So, um, so that's basically how that came, you know, that came about. Then, as far as the Burger Husky game, it was me and my niece group sitting in this house, and we were just, I was actually in my room listening to random old stuff that I've done. The song, um, it was called Getting My Belly. So we're sitting there listening to it, all this, you know. Well, she wasn't, she was in the other room and she overheard it. And she came in and she was like, Uncle, that's what they're doing right now. You, uh -uh, you need to put this out, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, girl, they don't wanna hear me no more. And she was like, yes, they do. And it kinda happened per se that way. She kinda influenced me to be the bad bitch that I am. You know, it's like, Uncle, you're a bad bitch, be yourself. You know, and then on top of that, you know, it was just, it was, it was so much. Everything just fell the way that it was supposed to. So I believe it's our world. Okay, so you would say it was kind of just alignment. Everything just yes. happened in a sequence of time that it was supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. I can even remember when you and I we were marching, uh, marching Bronco Express shop. So, um, Favorite thing, woo woo. But th this man was letting us listen to stuff back then, and we were like, oh, what? you know, what is this? Let's put this out. And at the time, he was, you know, he, he wasn't quite yet developed into Virgo, so it was kind of like, no, I'm just sharing some of my, you know, my gems. I'm a man of many talents. I'm just sharing this with y'all. I don't really want to put that out for say. So what would you say sequence into, besides the conversation with your niece, what really built up that momentum to make you say, okay, I'm going to really get into this. Well, it was, it was a lot. To be honest, KT, it was a lot. Um, everything has happened for a reason. So, coming from um, losing my mother, and, um, losing my grandma, my great grandma, my other grandma, you know, my dad, my brother, everything just fell in line the way it was supposed to. Even me meeting you was out of work. I had to go back to school in order for things to happen the right way because I mean imagine the music that you guys put me on to. You know what I'm saying? And that like my my kin like got serious, you know? It was um it was so many things. But it's also the life aspects too, um not just the music but like you know, going through homelessness and and realizing, you know, at one point I thought I was too good for God. And that's like one of the biggest things with my life that I tell everybody is that I thought I was too good for God, you know, when we were up on that. But, um, you know, I got to a point where, you know, I was agnostic, I was caring, you know, that's what the girls say. I was caring and I was just out here, you know, thinking that, you know, I, I had everything together. When we we don't know, we, nobody has anything together. We'll never have anything together. The, the universe is so vast that nobody knows anything. And when you get to the point where you understand that you know nothing, I think that's when you're really, like, when it really 
like settles in you, you know? So that had a lot to do with it too. I had to find myself. Okay. I have so many things in your briefcase that it's your, it's very well put together, I would say. Thank I look at you and I don't see your pain. I don't see that I couldn't imagine losing my mother, especially being a young black gay man, having to figure life out. You're cry. Prior, you know, you're, you're a veteran. We won't, we won't go too much into that, but just all these things and your music is so. I mean, let's, let's shake some ass. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. So this is what happened. I was in a really horrible relationship, and um, I have a tendency to get into relationships. You know my heart. Um, for for people who don't know, I'm I'm very um I'm kind of conservative, and I'm I'm really like my grandma. So you know, I believe I come from structure. So I believe in marriage, and you know, I come from a family with sixty-year marriages and stuff like that. That's the goal, you know. The goal is to, you know, generational wealth, make sure these kids are okay, things of that nature. So I got into this relationship with a younger man. It, it just didn't pan out the way that I wanted to, you know. At first, when I got into it, I knew in my mind, well, hey, red flag, too young, need to find out, you know, need to learn a lot, you know. But I was like, okay, I've seen relationships work. So I gave her the benefit of the doubt and I pushed forward for it. And I had a tendency of, um, well, I have a tendency of losing myself when I get into things. So what happened was I lost myself in this relationship. And um, in the, the, the apex or the ending of the relationship, I, I, I realized that you know, um, you know, I started finding that love for myself again. I started writing. That was the only form of the expression that I had was to write. Because all out of all of the artists I worked with, nobody was available. Everybody, you know, people were pregnant, having kids. You know, life is happening. You know, and I'm the only one that you know. And you know, I never wanted to be the star. I put so much energy into everybody else. So like, that was like a big thing so like when I start, I talk to God about it. Lord I talk to God about it. because I, spiritually I was thinking well I don't want to um you know I, I know that I have a talent and I know that I can make an impact but I don't want to make a negative impact and if you really look closely at what I do you can see that there there's much more a lot of people don't understand that there's so much homage being paid in these videos. You know, I'm, I'm you know, I've, I've talked to the ancestors, and they, they talk, I have to come back and respect them before I can move forward. That's why everything is happening like it's happening. But going through that relationship, I really basically, you know, learned that, you know, I have to love myself first before I love anybody else. And that sent me back into this realm of of me. I love music. I cannot let it go. I'm an artist. I'm an artist. So I can't focus all my energy into other artists and stuff like that when I'm not done yet. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I did. I focused myself in me and then look at what's going on. Like this, is, for me, it's out of world. This is like extraterrestrial. I'm just the old hood nigga. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Girl, I don't want to do that with five and chicken, you know, and just live life. And it's like crazy that things are going this way. But I knew it. I felt it. I, I was telling you about the angel numbers I was seeing. Um, I've been um, manifesting things because, you know, I, I don't want us to struggle anymore. And I think that. Um, I think that, you know, I look at it as more so, it's kind of kamikaze because I don't know what may happen because I'm putting myself, you know, out there. I'm, I'm risking my life to do this, but that's okay with me because if I if I can attain the, the, the financial status to take care of my people, then I'll be fine. I'm not going to have any kids or anything, but I have nieces, great nieces, 
great nephews, all of this. I have God ba- I got a million God babies. You know, I just want them to be able to live. You're just a lover of all music, but mm-hmm. you, you make feel good music. Yes, you listen purposely. to Yes, you listen to everything from Anita Baker down to Megan Thee Stallion. And it, mm-hmm. it is transcended in even some of the music that I know that you have and are capable of putting out that you have yet to even let it be known again to the world because we're, we're talking about this is not something new to this man this is this is etched in the grave back in <laughs> i write ballads i am a ballad to, i write wedding songs i write um i write a lot of rock i'm a stevie nicks fan fleetwood mac i'm big balladeer celine dion all of that but nobody wants to hear that anymore. Well, musicians mm-hmm. would like to hear it. Um, like you said, you wanted it at your wedding, the one that nobody's heard. I, yeah. So um, like that's a big song, and um, it, I feel like it's a number one hit. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, you have to like being an artist too. You have to 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 somewhat be a hybrid. It's almost like being a gay person. We have to adapt to society. And, you know, we have to adapt musically. You have to adapt. You have to grow. You cannot, as an artist, you cannot stay in that one lane. You have to, you have to grow. And that's why people have longevity. Let's talk about the Madonnas, the Janets, the Beyonce. It's a transformation. So, you know, I, I'm I'm there. This is, I've been studying this for years. We're not gonna say how many years. <laughs> Cause I'm 28. <laughs> so, but, you know, I'm, it's, it's something that I've, I've been studying. And I, I'm hoping that this is a breakthrough because, you know, like I said, I talked to God about it. Even I'm um, putting out um, Song What You Like. That's the video I did in the hotel room. It's a it's a hypersexual song, and I didn't feel comfortable putting it out. But I, we're human beings. We're sexual creatures. We have sex. Why is it so taboo for us to talk about things that are natural? That doesn't make any sense to me. And once I you know talk to you know talk to my higher power and and move forward, I'm you know. It is what it is. The true artistry and music, uh, it's everybody under the spectrum is included. It's art. Art is not one certain type of sound. And, and why thing. should why should you restrict your art exactly. because somebody is dogmatic? As we've learned over time, dogma is. Come on now, if we, if we look at it this. How do we make it out of the dark ages? Mm-hmm. You know, people, people, yeah, people started thinking for themselves. And uh, I, I'm not gonna say I think religion is controlled because I do believe in a higher power. I just think that at the same time, we're human and, and you should be allowed to be human. And we don't know what happens after this. We have no idea. So why not, if, if you're not bothering nobody, you're not hurting no kids or anything, why not just be? Yeah. 